Stand by, everybody. Yeah. Charlie, you haven't got your hammer, mate. Where's your hammer? Somebody find him his bleeding hammer. Yeah. Okay. And action. Guess what? This morning, my Phyllis found a sex toy in our wheelie bin. I'm not kidding. Last night, I put the black bin for plastics out on the street ready for today's collection. It was full to the brim, so it needed empty. She'd gone out just after breakfast to chuck in a few extras. The bin lid was up and there it was. This giant penis sticking up out of all our rubbish. That what upset my Phyllis was that, at her request, I just painted on the front of our bin, in fresh white paint, a big number 38. Oh, oh God. Now, worse still, when my Phyllis slammed the lid down on top of it, it must have set something off. The old bleeding bin started to jig up and down to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. she come running back into the house, yelling for me to go out and deal with it. By the time I got out there, air wheelie was halfway down the street. I called up with it, blocked it with my foot and pulled the thing out. Now Yankee Doodle still going full blast and the thing's waving about in my hand like a bleeding snake. Could I find the switch? Oh, <laughs> could I bugger it? You can imagine, half past eight on a Tuesday morning, there's me in my pyjamas and dressing gown standing in the middle of Blenheim Avenue wrestling with 12 inches of black plastic penis. <laughs> this had to be the moment, didn't it, when Patience Coldicott, three doors down on the left, come out to walk her dog. Now, it's one of them little yappers. He took one look at what was going on and come straight at me, barking fit to bust. It's all right, Darcy, it's only Mr Carter, she says. You're only trying to help, aren't you, Darcy? Meantime, I'm still trying to switch it off. Yet, yeah, isn't it that little button I can see between its testicles, she says. I press it, and lo and behold, Yankee Doodle drones to a stop and the thing flops over all limp-like. Now that was the moment when little Darcy, seizing the chance, leaps up, grabs it by the bollocks and tears it out of my hand. She calls out, Darcy, Darcy, no, no, bad dog. Give it to mummy, darling, you don't know where it's been. All obedient, the dog comes trotting up and drops it at her feet. There's me, Coldicott and little Darcy are stood there staring at it. She asked me if I'm aware that as an electrical appliance, I shouldn't have put it in the bin in the first place. I'd have done much better, she says, donating it to a charity shop. I says to her, I says, you don't think I'll put it in there? Well, didn't you? She says, well, of course I bloody didn't. Somebody's dumped it on us overnight. If I knew where it was, I'd give them what for. What about, she says, the Americans at number 44, with a picture of Donald Trump stuck up in their front window? I'd have thought it was obvious. If I was you, says Caldicott, I'd return it to the original owners. Yeah, or better still, she says, Let's get Darcy to do it. Now, I wasn't going to argue, was I? All I wanted was to wash my hands, so to speak. So, I gives her the nod. With that, she points to the thing lying at her feet, rattles out her instructions like, uh, retrieve, go, stop, drop, and in no time at all, Darcy the Wonder Dog has plonked it on the doorstep of number 44. Turning back to me, she says, no question, they were the culprits. After all, who else would choose to fornicate to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy? Surely any self-respecting British couple would have chosen one that played Land of Open Glory. <laughs> I didn't say anything because these days it's irrelevant, but 
between you and me, my preference would have been for Yankee Doodle. It's got a bit more of the old... Know what I mean?